Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Congregational Church. It is a balmy 72 degrees outside, not where we're at, but where Barb is, apparently. Um, it's always a dilemma on when Crystal should mute you all when the service starts, and when Barb said it was 72 degrees, I declared that that was the time to uh, mute everyone's microphone, because no one needs to hear that, Barb. <clears throat> Actually, it's not too bad up here. It's mainly just icy and wet and cold. Um, <laughs> and dark. We are people along the way, learning, growing, and acting in faith. And if you'd like to talk uh, more with someone about uh, First Congregational Church, about maybe the mission of the church, or what we're up to these days, or what our plans are for the future, uh, feel free to send me a message or give me a call. You can call the church office or email me directly, and my email is on the, on the uh, staff page of the church website. The bulletin is also on the home page, where you can download it and look at it on another device or on your screen, or you can print it, um, and it has all of the responsive readings and prayers and hymns that we will be singing as you see them in the uh, hymnal. But all of those words, for the most part, will be uh, viewable on the screen when the time comes during the service. And your microphone is muted. Um, and during the prayers of the people, though, you are encouraged to unmute your microphone and share with everyone. And you can uh, share either prayer concerns that you have or updates that people uh, may uh, want to know about or um, even some good news and some joys that, that you would like to share with the congregation. You can also, as always, type those in the chat and I will read those aloud uh, for everyone to hear. Let me know this week or during the week if you have any technical difficulties. And as uh, usual, you can call in using a phone if you are having a slow internet or a slow computer kind of a day. Uh, today after service, uh, we will still share in fellowship. So if you would like to join uh, with the people in a breakout room of roughly four to six people, uh, just sit tight after the service and I will randomly um, scatter you into different rooms. A few announcements that you'll see in the, um, in the bulletin. Uh, there is an open and affirming classes begin on Friday, February 5th at 6 p.m. And they will be every week, every Friday, until roughly until the uh, annual meeting on the third Sunday in April, I think is the 18th. There's also a family game night on January 29th. And I'm pretty certain that it, they're, they're playing uh, Farkle, which is a, a dice game. And if you haven't played it, it actually works pretty well over Zoom. So if you have uh, dice, I think you need six is what I remember. I think that's correct. If you have six uh, dice, um, you'll be ready to go. As, uh, as usual, we have the uh, a weekly um, groups that meet on Tuesday morning. We have a, a lectionary group that talks about the reading coming up. Uh, Roots of Joy is uh, meeting on Tuesday nights. The uh, afternoon tea is on Wednesdays um, and Fridays at 3 p.m. Um, by the way, the lectionary group's at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, and Roots of Joy is 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. And then there's also the, uh, the soup group, which is um, the, uh, um, they're meeting on Thursdays at, at 10 a.m. as well. And all of these groups are gathering in the uh, gathering Zoom room, and you can find that on the church website or it's always in the daily update as well. And now let our service continue. We gather to respond to the call of God's love. Thankful that someone cared enough to share this good news with us. May we be compassionate enough to share this divine presence with others. Love when shared is not divided but multiplied. Love given away is not diminished, but expanded. May our gathering beckon and welcome those near and far to know the love of this divine presence. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow God set the stars who give light to this world, 
modify things a little bit around here um, because of COVID. This lesson is typically one that I would do in the downstairs with the kids because one always needs no excuse to make cookies. And this is a cookie recipe to start with. So here we have white sugar. Let me see if I can make this work. Sorry about this, guys. White sugar, flour, brown sugar, an egg, peanut butter, chocolate chips, and butter. All of these ingredients are necessary to make peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. The interesting thing about this recipe, as with many recipes in the cooking world, is if you remove one ingredient, you no longer have what you need to make the cookies. It takes every piece and every one of these items to make peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. This is the same thing that God teaches us. It takes all of us, different colors and of different face, to make up his people. If you remove any one of these people, then we are not a whole. So when you are out in the world and you're looking at people and they may be different than you, you may not understand them. Remember that their part in this world is essential because without them, we are not all God's people. Thanks, Kathy. That was nice. Um, 
for our invitation to giving. Uh, we, we share in the ongoing work of the church, and I, I've said this a few times, but as we continue to plan for um, shifting in uh, how we uh, use the space and how we gather in the space, and as those discussions continue to unfold, um, we still encounter uh, the work of God's church in this place. And we still are doing the work uh, with the uh, Congregational uh, Support Fund. Uh, we're still looking and distributing money to people who, who may be temporarily uh, in need, especially right now. Um, and I know that uh, as uh, many of you uh, shared your, um, the last time that the, um, the COVID relief funds came, and you, for those of us who, who do not need those as urgently, that you, um, you're encouraged and welcome to share those still. We are still um, distributing those funds to people who need them. And you can do that by, um, by the same ways that we uh, send in our pledge payments or our offerings to the church. You can mail those uh, in an envelope. You can drop them off in the mail slot of the church, or you can go to the uh, church website and click the Give link in the top right corner. And just as a reminder, if, if you are sending um, funds for the Congregational Relief or Support Fund, just to make sure and note that in the memo when you do so. Please join me as we share in our dedication of gifts. May these gifts gathered within these ministries of grace be a blessing to friends and strangers, those like us and those not, those we might deem deserving and not, for the love of God reaches all of God's beloved. Amen. So as we be, prepare for our uh, time of prayer together, uh, Kate will lead us in with the, the ringing um, as I will be, I do a responsive reading from Psalm 62. I'm ringing my bells as part of the National Memorial Service to honor my friends who have died of COVID-19. My soul waits quietly for you. From you comes my deliverance. Only you are my rock, my redemption, my haven. I shall not be moved. How long will they press on me, push on me as though I were a leaning wall, a tottering fence? And whenever I rise up, they pull me down, delighting in my deception, blessing with their mouths, but cursing in their hearts. Yes, wait quietly, my soul. For you only do I hope in silence. Only you are my rock, my deliverance, my haven. I shall not be moved. You are my completion, my brightness. You, my strength, my protection. Let us trust you always, pouring out our hearts to you, our refuge, our solace.
To be human is but a breath. To be great is a lie. Heaped up on the scale, they rise up in the balance, for all together they are lighter than breath. Don't rely on deception or put your hope in robbery. Even if they bring you prosperity, it will do no good. You spoke once, and you spoke again, and what have I heard? That strength is built on you, that kindness flows from you, that you are the certain recompense for all according to their acts. Out of the pit we rise, speaking truth when it is ridiculed, walking in the way of peace when it is despised. God, the breadth and depth of suffering, of deep sadness and callousness have left their mark on us. Yet we will rise again as surely as the sun will rise. When we rise with our cry from the depths, we rise even when we cannot find the strength and we rise for those who have lost hope in today. And we remember the 400,000 people and those who are yet, who have died from COVID-19. We remember the scars it has left on those who remain. And we remember the healing that will remain long after it is done. And as surely as the sun will rise, we will proclaim the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. As Jesus passed along the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fish nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing nets. At that very moment, he called them. They followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. Can you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? I mean, most of you know that I could talk about fishing far more than I do. Sometimes I have to um, control how much I talk about certain topics because they're my favorite. But today, I get to talk about fishing. I mean, there is something magical about it that I, that I can't really, or at least I struggle to explain uh, to people who maybe don't enjoy it. I mean, it isn't about the patience or the quiet, even, even though those are important. It isn't really even about the fish themselves. I have received as much or more enjoyment on days when I encountered not a single one. And not everybody likes fishing, and that's okay. We can spend our free days in different places and be happy apart. But there is a relationship that is formed between oneself and fish. At least that has been my experience. It isn't built on the presence of fish, but rather the distance. I know fish because I have sought after them and failed, and sometimes failed miserably. And I think I began to really understand how deep my connection the fish was when I took seriously the practice of giving thanks specifically for the animals that gave their life in order that I may live so that I may eat. I mean, indigenous ways of knowing have helped me with this quite a bit. To claim that it is our responsibility to respect and cherish the life given for us. So acknowledging the food that I eat is in a way offering thanks for its own offering to me. And that is a humbling thing to do. Because the relationship and intertwining between our own life and the life of the food we eat, which includes plants as well as animals, means that I have a responsibility within that relationship. And I think that Christians, as Christians, we should see this as pretty normal. After all, we share in communion a very similar practice. Within this life-giving of Jesus, we find our own life. Every time we eat together, we are instructed to remember the intertwining of life, death, and living found in Christ. I would say that this is part of what has drawn me to fishing my entire life that there is a communing with something that is always just outside of your reach. I can know more and more what a particular species of fish is looking for or what the environmental conditions might mean for that day. But I can also fool myself into thinking that I tricked the fish into something. But I have come to know that it is more a question of whether I have prepared myself for that encounter. And even then, even if I have done everything right as best I know, it may not be enough, or it might perhaps be too much. There is a quote from the novella, A River Runs Through, it's not, it's not necessarily found completely in the movie, that connects the unknowableness of following Jesus and fishing for people. In the movie, this quote is contained in part in the sermon given by uh, Reverend McLean toward the end of the movie. Help, he said, 
is giving part of yourself to somebody who comes to accept it willingly and needs it badly. And so it is, he said, using an old homiletic transi transition, that we can seldom help anybody. Either we don't know what part to give or maybe we don't like to give any part of ourselves. Then more often than not, that the part that is needed is not wanted. And even more often, we do not have the part that is needed. In the movie, he concludes that we love completely without completely understanding. I hear Jesus' invitation to Simon and Andrew and James and John as this same sort of calling. There is no tricking people. There is no exact direction or outcome that they can know or anticipate. It even feels as though Jesus has an idea of where he is going, but not sure what steps it will take. It's a question of whether they are prepared to walk this life with Jesus or not. That's it. The first four bring their own skills and grow in understanding of the way of Jesus, but in the end, all they can do is to be their, to be their best, to prepare for this journey of invitation. They are invited by Jesus to begin with what they know, as people who know how to fish, even if that will surely not be enough to take them the whole distance. From the very beginning, they are asked to trust that they themselves are enough as they arrive. See, the work of Jesus will require a deep understanding of, of who we are as people in our place in this work, our own limitations, a comfort and trust in our own bodies, what strengths we have and what limitations we bring. And then it will ask us to accept more. It's fair to say that fishing is not the best model for people I'm guessing that if Jesus would have come a, upon people who were doing something besides fishing, he would have used a different line. Perhaps you might begin with what you know. That may be acting or quilting. It may be tennis or plumbing. Whatever it is that is helpful for you to begin, whatever gives you the confidence to take that first step, then start there. But don't be surprised if God is asking more of you for step two, for something completely different in days to come? What is your place of beginning may be insufficient tomorrow? And such is the way. See, because Jesus is not offering a tightly formed theological framework and quizzing what the disciples might understand He's not proposing an intellectual exercise that will surely give a well-formed answer before they act. He's offering, most simply, a way of life. It does not mean an abandonment of who we are in our experiences, but a willingness to accept a fuller expression of who we are. It will require us to put our life where our faith leads. It asks of us what we are ready to do, whether we are ready to weep with those who weep, to mourn with those who mourn, or to rejoice with those who rejoice. And for Mark, it all happened so quickly. I mean, the telling of it to get to this point. I mean, Jesus is baptized, and immediately he heads into the wilderness. But the wilderness, in this sense, is a place of solace and preparation not of separation and torment. The wilderness is not the loss of everything, but the distance to see things for what they are, and then to walk out a clearer notion of purpose. 
The Spirit drove Jesus into life, not out of it. And then John was arrested, and there can be no delay on the work of God to come. There will be no holding back what is ahead. This urgency is with the first disciples as well. They don't even answer the call with words. They just drop what they're doing and follow. The movement of God, when it is upon you, asks not for clear agreement, but only compels movement. Joining in the outpouring of the presence of God asks only that we are willing to join. There is no expectation that we are prepared for the next moment. Only that we are willing to trust that we have a place in it. See, learning how to fish is to learn to know your place in a particular kind of relationship. You prepare yourself to be open to the waters in front of you without a known outcome. This is what Jesus is asking. We join in the breaking forth of God and prepare for the breaking forth of God to come. And where that leads and what it will require of us is anybody's guess. Yours is as good as mine. But if we are free enough to show up as we currently are, then let tomorrow be left unto its own. Don't overthink it. Don't think that you need to be prepared for it completely. As a matter of story, you don't even need to declare yourself as ready for it. Just take the next step as you are right now and allow yourself to be moved. Mark gives a call for the disciples and for us to give ourselves over to the way of Jesus, to prepare ourselves to go by moving. We will not know if the care we give or the energy we we bring will accomplish what we had hoped for, but instead we trust that what we do and even who we are will be fully enough. And really there's nothing more that we can do. We don't know if the next moment will require what we have to offer even. For we cannot know the ways of God leading before us. Only that it will call us and compel us to get up and move. I think especially in seasons of unknown outcomes and turmoil, we are unable to cut a clear path in front of us to see the road laid out in front of us. It may be more like a day of fishing than we are comfortable with. Today may be a bust. It may be that the way of Jesus is not built on presence, but rather the distance beckoning us onward. And we will know the way more every day because we have sought after it and failed. And yet we press on, remembering the call that compelled our first move, the fleeting and expanding presence of God that drew us out as our whole self, into the way yet to be. Thanks be to God.
we, we find our place in this movement of God in this time of, this time when it seems as if, like us, the movement of God has ceased. When we proclaim this step, as unstable as it is, will lead us to the next when we will be more sure-footed and confident in the way of Christ leading before us. We go in peace, proclaiming that peace, trusting in the way of Christ to come. Amen.